So Mashuka Tensei is back with part two of the second season, and to be honest, I think this is one of Rudy's strongest moments today by the end, with the whole getting a home together, you know, painting the roof or getting the roof to be the color of Sylphie's old hair, just everything about that scene was actually incredibly romantic, but they also do what Mashuka Tensei is good at, it being out of pocket, being silly, being what the hell did I see, did you just have this automated doll run after us like we're in a slasher flick? And just, you know, the fact that he can just so boldly walk into a room and be like, Ladies and gentlemen, I have been cured. And Cliff can be like, damn, it must have been hard. And he's like, yep, it was. Like, this was out of pocket. It was silly. It was actually really sweet. Like, the best part of the entire episode is Sylphie's self-doubt of being like, Yeah, I got a couple of years here, and then afterwards we might stay for a bit, but I can't really settle down. I'm not good enough for you. And he grabs her by the hand and says, You're mine we're getting married. Like, that's actually peak development for Rudy, especially given everything that he went through in the prior episodes. Mishuka Tensei's back? It's better than ever. I, of course, have full live reactions to Mishuka Tensei over on my Patreon if you want to see my full link of thoughts to this or any of the future episodes. It's going to be over there if you're interested. So, where do you even begin in this episode? Because they just throw you back in the thick of it, and, uh, well, I guess because you know, the sex was so good, religion has been changed. Roxy's still always going to be worshipped, but I guess we can add Sylphie to the mix as well, which is uh, probably about the uh, <laughs> most Rudy thing you could ask for. And honestly, his uh, declaration of just his newfound uh, manhood was pretty funny. And just the fact that the two uh, were realizing like, oh shit, he feels like he's in heat. He's going to get everyone knocked up. They're loving it, of course, but like, it was out of pocket. But the idea of, like, we ended the previous core with, like, the whole, like, I'm gonna marry her. That's great. Well, what do you do for marriage? And they're like, well, you gotta get a home together. It's like, okay, bet. And honestly, I wasn't expecting to see the home already, like, transformed when she went and saw it. I thought it was still gonna look run down and, like, hey, it was gonna be, like, a little team project. Nah, Rudy, Rudy was an all-star, man. And honestly, even before he cleaned it up, like, when the three of them went there to figure out who was, like, haunting the building or whatever, I was like, oh shit, like, yeah, that has a lot of potential. Like, sure, it looks run down, and yeah, there's a lot of cleaning and repairs that need to be done, but, like, hell yeah, buy that thing at a discount because, one, people think it's haunted, and two, it's, you know, not in the best shape. But the actual size, the land placement, everything, like, it's, that's a good home. Like, that's a fantastic home. And the idea of how he transforms it. Sure, like, not everything's done. He got the bedroom fixed upstairs, which is the most important, uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But in general, like, it just looks nice. And it's a very beautiful moment. And that alone was enough to be like, oh, look at Rudy doing something for Sylphie, making sure that, you know, she feels like the marriage is more than just, you know, a, just a, a thing by name. But really, like, the best part of what they did was that conversation on the bed, because it makes sense. It's some understandable worry. Like, a lot of shit happened really quickly, Sure, they had chemistry from before, and they built some connections across the school year there, but at the same time, I mean, it is still very fast, and it's, like, lightning quick. Hell, next episode is the wedding ceremony based on the title of the episode. So the idea of her realizing that, like, I'm probably not good enough for what you're looking for. Like, sure, I'll have as many kids as you want. I'll do all this, but it's like, timeline-wise, maybe we only have a few years together before I have to leave the country or have to do this. And I love the fact that he doesn't allow that self-doubt and says, hey, you should do what you want. Whether that is you have to leave the country for a couple of years, whether you have a job that will tr make you travel around and leave me for periods of time. He's basically saying, that's all okay. You help me so much. If you're not enough for me, who the hell would be? I'm like, that's such a powerful message. And it was very, very sweet. Rudy has a lot of questionable behavior and out-of-pocketness, but in moments like those, you generally come out to respect a scene like that and you understand why Sylphie feels so happy around him. The most fun part of the episode was the doll, which I have to believe, and I refuse to not die on this hill, Zanaba is gonna bang that doll, or he's gonna fall in love with that doll. I'm just gonna throw it out there. This man doesn't, he has like barbaric hands, he walked in with a goddamn club, and the man doesn't have the, the skills for small dolls. But that thing's gonna be able to, he's going to be, the first person in this world to turn this automated doll into a, uh, a robot wife. I, I believe that with every bone in my body. And even if he can't sleep with it, 
boy howdy is he gonna fall in love with it i just refuse to think otherwise and it's funnier the more i think of it but it does make sense that like he would be the one tasked at like doing it because even if like rudy would be more talented he can do stuff quicker he can't craft little dolls like rudy or you know julie can so this would be like his pet projects just you know that pet project make sure you knock on the door before you walk in i don't, I don't trust what he's about to do but the uh jump scare moment it didn't jump scare me because i knew something was gonna happen so i was like i was like sitting straight up like as soon as i saw those fingers I was like nope I'm not gonna get relaxed and that thing jumps out and that thing like I felt like it was something that was gonna pop out of that one movie where that woman comes out of the well and climbs out of the TV it's just it was creepy as hell man and honestly they actually bait you hard I actually thought like I wasn't thinking they killed Zaba but I was like he actually got stabbed like the way they thrust it I was like oh rip and I'm like well we're starting this uh core rather intense now, the, the dude's built like a goddamn wall, and it just very quickly was okay. Like, the fact that at one point, he grabs Cliff by the head like Kingpin does to Spider-Man, and after he's done crushing his skull, you see the poor bastard using some healing magic to heal himself, because he's like, what the fuck's going on, man? Like, this dude's just, he's such a wild card, man. He, like, he's way more out of pocket than Rudy ever will be, but Jesus, man, like, that was so fun watching them, because... I thought it was actually people. My gut reaction was that there was some people or a person living there. Sounds were being made because of naturally if you live in a building at night and, you know, you're making some dinner or something. And I thought if they went that direction, then we would end up with like a housekeeper that Rudy would pay them to be a servant or something like that. And no, it was uh, an automated doll that comes out at night and Jesus, man, that thing was fast like i'm interested to see what they're gonna do like in terms of like practicality in terms of what that thing can actually do but either way like they came back they came back swinging we altered the religion which never thought was gonna happen you have some funny dialogue and some cute little moments you get some great emotional bonding with our two lovebirds who should be tying the knot next episode and we had a fun adventure in this haunted mansion that clearly wasn't gonna be ghosts but i wasn't sure where we were going after it clearly wasn't humans and uh Honestly, they absolutely surprised me. I love me some Ashuka Tensei. I've been very excited to jump back in, and I'm interested to see what they're going to do because, uh, you know, I really feel like core one of uh, this season changed a lot of what to expect from the show. And I think uh, with now where we're at with so much great characterization and Rudy being healed, right? Like he no longer has that trauma, he no longer has that insecurity. So what's that going to do for current relationships within the school? But most importantly, what's his next mission? Is it just going to be to study or is something else going to pop up in his mind that's going to be the immediate focus? Only time will tell, but Rudy is uh, at his best, his best version of himself to date, clearly. Uh, he actually thinks about others and he's, you know, very much a more mature person than he was, but he's still going to be Rudy at the end of the day. And uh, he's pretty much saying, take it or leave it. And I'm going to take it for now. Let me know what you thought of this week's episode, the return. What do you hope to see? Hopefully with that wedding ceremony next week, let me know down below, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, of course, ring that bell so you can know if I would upload more. And like I mentioned, we have a full live reaction over on my Patreon and hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today we got Kekarek, Asiel, Justin Barnard, Clay Samuel, Rafa Lakarski, and Hayden. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.